To hook or not to hook? This is a question that has plagued many of the great players in the game. Some love the shot and play it as often as possible, like Mark Taylor, while Steve Waugh doesn't. It is a dangerous shot, but if you play it well, it can get you a lot of runs. And away it goes, over the top. You need to be 38 feet tall to touch that. 100 up for Australia. When the bowler pitches short and strays towards leg, it's the batsman's opportunity to get inside the line and hook. Getting into the correct position quickly is paramount. We want to move onto our back foot with a decisive step back and across and get our head and eyes inside the line of the ball. This ensures that if we miss the ball, it will pass safely through to the keeper rather than cracking you in the scone. As with most shots we play in cricket, we should try and keep the ball on the ground, so we need to roll our wrists over the ball as we hit it. A good way to practice the hook shot is to get someone to throw tennis balls to you. Once you feel comfortable with that, put the necessary protective equipment on and get real cricket balls thrown at you. Keeping in mind the most important thing is to get your head and eyes inside the line of the ball and to keep the ball on the ground, roll those wrists. So happy hooking. That's up in the air. He's played it nicely though, Paul Collingwood. He's beaten Brad Williams down on the fence. Excellent running. And he's coming back for another one. And he's just home. In my opinion, part of being a good batsman is being a good runner between the wickets. When you're batting, communication is everything. Your calls must be loud and clear. The three calls we use are yes, no and wait. Never say go because it sounds like no. As a rule, if the ball goes in front of the wicket, it's the striker's call. If it goes behind the wicket, it's the non-striker's call. The non-striker should be backing up every ball. You don't have to be a fast runner to be a good runner between the wickets. You can make up time with efficient turns. An efficient turn means getting low in to the crease and also out of the crease, making the most of the length of your bat and the handle. And remember, never turn blind. Always turn facing the fieldsman. When finishing your run, ground your bat about a metre before the line and slide it over. So work hard on your running between the wickets. Doing so could add 10 to 20 runs to your total, which could be the difference between winning and losing the game. As a rule, you only get between 10 to 15 minutes in the nets, so it's vitally important that you make the most of that time to improve your batting. Every time I go to the nets, I try and train as I play and put myself into match situations. Firstly, as I would in a match, I spend the first few minutes trying to get my eye in and trying to play as straight as possible. Early on, I'll try and get my feet moving with deliberate movements either forward or back. Once I've done that, I'll start playing a few more shots, still being conscious of playing each ball on its merits. I also try to imagine where the fielders would be and try and hit the ball into the gaps. Even though I'm in the nets, I still value my wicket highly and try not to get out at all costs. The habits that you form in the nets will no doubt follow you into your matches. Plan your net sessions well and remember, never ever leave the nets until you're satisfied with what you've achieved.